been, we've been in this town, we've been selling in this town for 18 years. It's a nice street, it's like the last uh, mom and pop, uh, I think, Main Street in, in the Hamptons. This is not like East Hampton, we don't have a Tiffany's, we don't have a Ralph Lauren. But it's, uh, I mean, all the people who have stores here own their stores. And we've been in this spot for about 12 years, this gallery spot. The truth is, I, I paint rather quickly, which I don't really, I mean, it's not really fair to say I, I, I paint fast, so I paint different styles, but I, I really think they're all sort of the same thing. Some of them are more finished than others, some of them are more painterly, uh, but it's all about color and design, so it's really about, that's really what it's more about. I mean, it's more about and telling a story in paint. So then I said to my mother, who was very clever, I said, why don't you write a kid's book? For me, based on all the beach paintings that I had been doing. And so she wrote a book, and then from there we did, you know, we've done 20 books now. We've done, uh, she's very funny, she's good. I was in a meeting with HBO one day, and I said, I can make a cheap show. My name is Duncan. Oh, you can't fool me. You're a sock. Yeah, we're all socks. Whoa! And they didn't believe me, and they said, no, you can't. And I said, yes, I can. <laughs> then I came home, and within a month, we had put together, uh, you know, these puppets. Or don't use that flipper. And, uh, or don't go watching all the other shows on other TVs. I mean, who needs HBO when you got Plum TV? You know, and I said we wanted to do uh, a very inexpensive show. You can't say HBO? What can I say? Can I say Showtime? How about, how about Nickelodeon? And hence we got the title, The Cheap Show, and it's stuck to the show. I am stuffed with the fruit from the tree of knowledge. I need toast! Now get out of here, you silly Englishman! Can I have a pony? If you want to cook popcorn, please read the directions on the box. Will you all be quiet back there? I'm trying to concentrate. And really at the same time that we had gotten this idea, it was Plum TV that came along and showed up in the Hamptons. And I thought, oh, this is an interesting idea. It's an interesting concept for TV. It was very entrepreneurial and it was very independent TV. Oh, hi everybody, this is me, Duncan Biscotti, on the set of The Cheap Show. And you're going to see the big secrets here behind The Cheap Show, and you're going to discover that it really is truly very cheap and not very exciting. It's like watching grass grow. Okay? <laughs> I did not go to film school, and I really learned, I, I learned by the seat of my pants on this show. I really wanted to do this show. I knew enough about, I knew a little bit about movies. I really taught myself editing on that Final Cut Pro system. Uh, and the concept of the show really is that it's a sitcom. It's a story about those characters in the diner. A lot of people who have seen the show look at it and say, I can't believe you shot that show in one day and edited it the next and then you were done. I was an illustrator for a lot of magazines and pretty much right out of college. I mean, I was in school when I got my first job at uh, the New York Times. And uh, then I went to grad school, which uh, at th I went to grad school at School of Visual Arts for journalism. And the journalism program was uh, new at the time. And it was really a, it was a sketchbook. It was the idea that you would go out to an event and cover it as an illustrator and put your perspective on it as an artist. Uh, this was my book from Los Angeles. This is my sketchbook. And yet everybody who read, who looked at this book, when I used to carry this book around with me in LA to meetings, they'd say, are oh, you really, uh, there's something about this book that really captures Los Angeles. And it isn't just the fact that there's palm trees in the background. Sun Man. 
the magician. I actually own this shirt. It's like pineapple shirt. And this is a picture of my agent. He's a killer. But this was this was a great book. I used to take this book with, to restaurants with me, and every waiter used to come up to me, and I would be doodling in this book, and people would stop me and talk to me in Los Angeles, and they'd say things and say, "Wow, where did you do this?" And I said, "Oh, it's just kind of like a fun thing to do." So, uh, and I refused to sell my sketchbooks. People would ask me, but I won't sell them. They're all on my shelf. I have all my sketchbooks. We did. Um, uh, we had a feature film at Fox called uh, Leo Spatz Ratcatcher, and in Leo Spatz Ratcatcher there were two monkey bellhops, and here they are. They used to smoke cigars, and they used to be monkey bellhops, and they've segued over the years now. I mean, Green Monkeys has been running for six years in dance papers. You can see it online, and my mother writes it, and then sometimes I write it, and then sometimes she fixes my writing, and then sometimes I'll come up with a joke, and she rewrites it. And it's been it's, it's a great relationship, and I draw it, and this is what it looks like. Really, it was from the children's books that we did that led us into doing an animated series for Nickelodeon. Maggie and the ferocious beast in nowhere land. To nowhere land. Come along if you can. Hey ho, come on, let's go to nowhere land. With Maggie and the ferocious beast. Great googly moogly. I always thought that what I, the way I painted was cinematic in its own kind of way. I mean, I think the drawings that I did, the, the kind of journalistic reportage that I used to do in an event was sort of like storyboarding. It was sort of like, it, it's sort of like, I think paintings have to tell a story and, you know, either you can tell a story by painting or you can tell a story in film. It's all about, you know, it's all about telling, it's all about storytelling. <laughs> My mother, Betty, who well, I always call her Betty, uh, when I was a kid, really did read to us a lot. I have a twin sister, and she read a lot of poetry to us. She read a lot of Rachel Lindsay. She read a lot of The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. I knew that when I was in kindergarten. She wrote when she was a little kid, and she she would spin stories to, to her friends about things, and she's very, she was very funny. She's very talented. Actually, she's a very talented lady. I think she's very underappreciated sometimes. I think they look at the paintings and they're so blown away by the artwork and the color and they say, oh, the paintings are so beautiful, but they really don't, uh, when, they go in, they, when they go home and they read the book, they always come back and they say, oh my God, that Hoppy and Joe is just the most beautiful story. Hoppy and Joe is a personal favorite of ours. It's a story about a, a one-legged seagull, his name is Hoppy because he lost his leg, he's got one foot, and his, uh, his friend who's a dog, his name is Joe. And uh, Hoppy and Joe is a beautiful story of, of friendship and about the beach, it's about how they stick up for each other. Ha, 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 ha.